We looked at a lot of the work that was in the collection. I was trying to mine and see what artists are in the collection that weren't of European descent. And then trying to see what did the collection look like from artists from the Global South or from artists of color. So I'm interested in seeing what is missing from that conversation that can contribute and make that conversation richer. What was interesting to me was to be able to see how an institution like the Guggenheim evolved, what it can offer and how it's understood culturally. Then I became most interested in the work being made after the war when things feel so dehumanized. The body has become really interesting to me or the disembodied parts of bodies. I think there's an undercurrent of some kind of subconscious understanding that is more about the psychological dynamics around experiencing being destabilized or violence or being dehumanized. Definitely there's this aspect of confusion, but there's also this insistence on possibility. What could be made in this moment of cognitive confusion? So angst is a part of that and almost desperation, but there's also this other kind of light possibility of invention of something else. I think that where we are at the moment is there's like a different kind of challenge to the powers of balance and things feel really unstable. But at the same time, you see a lot of aspects of possibility and a different type of future that can emerge from it within that. The Guggenheim, architecturally, there's an aspect of utopian desire and fantasy, but there's also an aspect of play. This kind of imaginative invention of space that can somehow shift how you engage with art. So this idea of creating a space for floating paintings in a vessel that looks like it's almost like not grounded on the planet. There's this really incredible dynamic there. It's profound, really. <laughs>